join us if he wants to. Come on, sweetie. All right, George, we're recording, so you can go ahead. All right, thank you very much, Athena. Um, seeing the presence of a quorum, it is 10.31 a.m. I'm going to call this uh, meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee to order. It is September 29th. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. I will give the instructions, actually, if uh, that becomes necessary. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. I'm just going to quickly check and make sure that everyone can still be heard and seen. So, Pat. I'm here. Great. And uh, Mandy. Present. And Darcy. Yes. Great. Thank you. Emily is here, our note taker. Thank you, Emily. And uh, so I'm going to put the agenda up on the screen. We're going to talk about it for a moment. Um, as usual, there are, let's see here, uh, there's the agenda. Let's take a look at it. Um, all right, the first item of order this morning is going to decide how we want to continue to meet for the rest of the term. We'll get to that in just a second. Then we're going to look at the FinCom vacancy situation um, and discuss that and maybe actually take an action. We'll see what the committee thinks. Um, item number four is stricken. Um, that actually came from the meeting that we didn't uh, hold because we didn't have a quorum, but that is no longer moot. And then we're going to look at the uh, ADU zoning amendment. Item number six is no longer moot, at least at the moment. And, uh, but we do have a zoning amendment that is presentable to us. Uh, and so under the 48 hour rule, since I just got that amendment on, what was it, right after Monday night's meeting, um, we will hopefully turn to that. Um, and I think uh, item seven has already been dealt with because uh, it was dealt with at the council meeting. It was, again, that was an item that we were going to discuss in advance of the council meeting. It's no longer relevant. Um, and we'll talk about eight when we get to it. And we do have some minutes to look at. And that's sort of what we're looking at this morning. Um, any questions about the agenda? So a couple items are being stricken and we do have one item unanticipated that we'll be dealing with a little bit later. So did you say we are doing five and six? Uh, we are doing five, six is stricken. Um, it's no longer at the moment, it's not ready for prime time. And so we can't redo it, and, right. but five is, and we do have another zoning amendment that um, I was given on Monday, actually, it was, I think it was Tuesday morning <laughs> when it finally got to me. Um, and we can look at that. Um, so that will be under items unanticipated. Okay, any other questions about the agenda? If not, I'm going to put up the vacancy notice, um, just out of just so you can see that it did get you sent out. Item two, George. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First, before we get to that, let us discuss and decide how we want to continue meeting um, and how long we want this to last. So uh, the floor is open. <laughs> I, I will, am very happy to continue for this group to meet remotely, but I also would come and meet in person. We're a small enough group that I feel comfortable doing that. I, I do have lost track of what that will mean in terms of IT support and stuff, so. It would be a little bit uh, more complicated than what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, Emily, yeah. for instance, would have to be physically present, I believe. Um, and at least one IT person would have to be there, I believe. Though I, perhaps I could be trained. I think Lynn is talking about some kind of training um, but um, so it's certainly not out of the question. Um, and this is a time where I feel like Emily should have a voice. Uh, if, okay. Well, if she wishes to speak, if, she, yeah, if she I wishes would to recognize speak about her. this um, issue, I think that'd be You're going to have to raise her hand. <laughs> or yell. <laughs> she could just speak, I know. Darcy, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I just am perfectly fine with and would like to meet remotely. No, okay. just adopt what the full council adopted. 
what they did yeah and would you also the length in other words through through our term in other words we won't keep coming back to this your thought would be it would be remote a zoom remote until the end of our term till december or whatever it is um yeah well look, yeah you know, i mean if something changed, changed um yeah. we could okay. bring it up again um sure but um yeah it just seems like it's easy um I say I have to agree with you both. Um, it, it's at this point, um, I don't like it um, personally, uh, but I've said this, you've heard me speak about it. So it's, it's silly to go back, but it's, it's about my personal preference. And um, I understand that for some, it's just not, they just, I understand. So I think what we should probably do, uh, what I would suggest is that we uh, we're reluctantly continue meeting on Zoom until uh, December. Uh, I think our last meeting is December 15th. So through December 15th, um, we will continue to meet remotely. Um, and then I don't know how the next GOL committee will figure this out. I don't know how the next council will figure it out, but, um, uh, or should we, I'm wondering if, well, on the 15th, should we revisit it? Just make the possibility of revisiting it just in the sense that we could set a policy for the next GOL committee, whoever they may be, and then they can change it once they meet. So if we're still meeting remotely in, on the 15th, which is what we're suggesting, when we meet on the 15th, could we um, make the next meeting a remote meeting? And then, then they would have to decide what they wanna do or does it even matter? Maybe it doesn't matter. I'm against that completely. We don't even know what the makeup of the next GOL committee will be, what yeah. the meeting time will be. We can't set that meeting. The well, nothing, okay, that's yeah, true. We can. So it's going to okay. So we yeah. can only bind ourselves, okay. not the next council. Oh, okay. So, okay. It's going to be their problem, and, and the council will have to figure it out. Okay. All right. So I'm hearing at least three voices saying that, that we're going to continue on Zoom through December 15th to the end of our term. Um, and so I'm going to make a motion that, uh, to that effect, that uh, GOL will continue, continue to meet remotely uh, through the end of its term, uh, which is effectively December 15th, uh, 2021. Second. There, second, thank you, Darcy. Um, I think it's been discussed enough, so I'm gonna go right to a vote and I'll start uh, with uh, uh, Pat. Aye. And Mandy. Aye. And Darcy? Yes. Okay, and the chair is a yes. So the vote is 4 0 um, to continue using the remote format. All right. Um, I want to talk briefly about the FinCom situation. I want to share the screen. I want to put up the, uh, the bulletin, which was posted. Um, let's see here. There it is. Um, uh, let me open that up. So I assume you can see it. Um, what I just want to draw your attention to, A, is the fact that it was posted. It was posted on September 14th. So we have um, just surpassed the 14-day uh, requirement. It's now September 29th. So it is, if we wish, uh, within our power to declare the pool sufficient and to proceed to the next step. Um, we may decide not to do that, but that is within our power, um, given the rules that we follow. Um, what I wanted to tell you, and I can also, so unless you want to read this in any detail, I'm going to take it down now, but I want you to show you the date. It was posted on that date. Um, and then I was going to put up, if I can make this work, so that can go away. Um, I'm going to put the agenda over there. And I want to see if I can get this to, um, all right, let's see if this will work. What I want to share is not a file, but I want to share this. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. Can you see this? Can I move it? Uh, sorry. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, I just show, you can all see this, I assume. So you can see the FinCom bulletin here, yeah. which I just showed you. This is the pool at the moment. We have eight candidates. Um, wow. Th this, well, yes, uh, this candidate came fairly recently. Um, actually, I think they might have come a day before the notice was put up. 
Um, but I have had no applicants in the 14 day period, but we do have a pool of eight candidates. I've reached out to those that um, would be appropriate to reach out to, that is people who um, had been in a previous pool and are still within the three year limit. And a couple said, no, thank you. A couple did not respond. Um, and a couple said, yes, I would very much. So for instance, Mr. Kim, who has been in the pool in the past said he would like to be considered. Um, so we have, I think, a, a, uh, a sizable pool of eight individuals. Um, I cannot guarantee that they will uh, all submit SOIs and come forward for interviews, but that's obviously their decision. Um, so what I'm gonna suggest is that yeah. we consider um, uh, approving the, uh, uh, what's the phrase I want here? Basically our uh, selection guidance and we consider um, voting the pool sufficient so that we can begin to move forward uh, toward SOIs and towards eventually towards an interview. Um, that's my suggestion. Uh, eight individuals seems uh, a substantial number. Um, it is a, a mixed diverse pool in terms of uh, background and ethnicity. Um, so that's my thought. What do people think about this? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, think, yeah. uh, but uh, do we do we? Um, is there a way for us to see? Yes, this is a downside of Zoom, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, is is there a way for us to see who we, who was on the list that you called? Or that you well, I reached out. I reached. I didn't call anybody. I reached out by email. Um, I don't really have the time uh, to call people individually. Um, I do. So um, once the notice is posted, I send an email to all the members of the, the the pool that are already there, who've been already been in the pool and are still in the pool, and I tell them, you know, um, that this is uh, that there's a notice posted. So I do them the courtesy of telling them that the notice has been posted, and I ask them if they wish to be. Uh, considered if they wish to, to be in the pool. Um, if they do not respond, they still stay in the pool. If they do respond right, and yeah. say no, I take them out. And I had two people do that. And if they respond and say yes, obviously they stay in the pool. Um, in the case of Diaz, um, that person had just submitted their uh, application like either the day after or the day, I think it was the day before um, we actually went to post the official notice. So I didn't see any reason in reaching out to him. Um, or her, I don't even remember now. Um, they clearly are interested. They just they just submitted a, a CAO. So that's what I do. Um, yeah, I'm just I, I'm just remembering the process back when mm -hmm. when I was in charge of it in Oka, as yep. you recall. Um, yeah, yeah. And the the staff at that point, the the um, town staff were were still helping us. Right. And. Um, and we we were able to look at the the full list of um, who who and the staff were the ones that contacted the people. Yeah, that um, would be sweet. Yeah, but yeah, that's not the way <laughs> and it is. Yeah. So they we had a spreadsheet and it said you know like what the response was from each person, which I found helpful. You know, like they moved away or they said they weren't interested or whatever. I thought that was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a good thing for the committee to be able to see. Um, just saying. Just no, I understand. Saying that, I understand. That, that, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Um, if we had a staff, if I had someone, I could say, please reach out to these people. But I do do it. Um, but I do not do it by phone. I do it by email. Um, and I can I can track down the emails. But in some cases, the email was not answered. Um, but I can certainly do that, and I can put that in a. Uh, uh, a, a, a packet or whatever, and it can put it on our website and I can show it to you next time. But um, that's, um, Mandy, your hand is up, please. Yes, so two nights ago, the council passed a new policy. And so I'm curious how you're integrating that into this because the new policy is reaching back only two years and if a new CAF isn't submitted, they're out of the pool. Um, and so you don't have to keep contacting them. I believe all of these, Mandy, yes. I believe all of these are within so, the two-year limit. Well, well um, no, but but I guess what I'm saying is the new policy was you contact all individuals who submitted a CAF within two years prior to the publication of the bulletin board notice. 
yep. and tell them that if they're still interested, they must resubmit a CAF. Only those individuals who submit a CAF after the bulletin board notice is published shall be considered part of the applicant pool going forward. And so I, I guess I'm wondering how we integrate that since we're mid process. Well, um, I'm not saying yeah. it needs done. The guy that submitted it right before right. probably doesn't need to submit a new one a week later. Um, you know, if they missed it by a day, but how do we integrate that versus the old process since we started this mid process? That's a good question. Um, my initial thought was that since the new process had not been institutionalized or made official while I was doing this, that I'm going to be governed by the old process throughout. Um, but that could be challenged. Um, the other possible thought I had was that I can easily reach out to all eight of the, if we agree the pool, if we declare the pool sufficient and we do agree on the selection guidance, I can reach out to all the eight individuals and say, you know, you're gonna to need to do two things for me. You're gonna to have to resubmit a CAF and you're going to have to um, submit an SOI. Um, I could do that. Um, I, I guess it's a question of, you know, I started this process and we started this process before there was a change in policy. And so I consider myself governed by the old policy, but that may just be a quibble. Maybe a, a lawyer, Mandy, for instance, might say, you know, now that there's a new policy, it governs you no matter what was the case, you know, prior to what, you know, before the policy was created. So I think I just need advice from the, the three of you. Um, do you want me to, um, for, I do expect us to have interviews, obviously. I do expect us to um, create interview questions in advance. I do expect us to interview everybody as a group. Um, so in a sense, why wouldn't I just also then go back to these people and say, by the way, I know it's a pain, but you got to resubmit a calf. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, go ahead. Could you, when you when you contact them, just attach their previous calf so that it's you know so that at least we're being friendly and agreeable and saying saying you know because they probably would just copy and paste their previous calf. I, I think be... it'd be easier actually just to fill out the calf. <laughs> actually, it's such a simple document. But yes, oh, I, the, I oh the new yeah. the new calf, yeah, it's like yeah, right, yeah. yeah. That's, so that's I think definitely. it's probably easiest just to say I'm happy to do it, but I think it's easiest just to say, look, I would yeah. like us to grant uh, grandmother this, okay. um, and okay. just assume that because we started the process before, um, I will go with what the committee decides. But it just seems to me to be a waste of energy this time. Yeah, I, I yeah, okay. I agree with that. So you, you, it sounds like you're willing to sort of do a hybrid here, since I this initial outreach was done prior to the policy being adopted. You're okay with me? Just we're just accepting their caps as they are, and I'm just going to tell them the next step for you is to um, submit an SOI, and it's due within, and I'll, I'll create a deadline of, of maybe a week or so that in theory we could. Um, anyway, uh, so that. I'm as long gonna, as all the other steps follow the new happen, process. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my plan. Hello. Mandy? My plan. Yeah. What do you think? That's fine. I just, I just wanted to confirm what was going on because the process, yeah, yeah. which I'm, I'm okay with that. If, if George is, that's fine. Now, here's a thought. Just, I, I would, I, just to, not to complicate things, but just to be honest with the policy. The reason we adopted a submitting a CAF, and this I think was Darcy's idea, and I thought it was a good one, is that it alerts everyone on the council to what the pool is. Um, and um, so one option would be for me to just um, send an email to the council um, with the eight CAFs um, attached and just say, FYI, this is the FinCom pool. And going forward, um, they will be alerted to this because we will require everybody to submit a CAF um, and it'll, but it will be up to the individual counselor to pay attention. Um, I, again, if a future chair could do this every time they um, are, once we declare the pool sufficient, they could gather all the CAFs and just send them out um, to counselors FYI. Um, so that's another option. 
the purpose is I understood it and I was the reason I voted for it and I thought it was Darcy's point was that obviously when you're dealing with two years uh, even now it's three years but it's now two years okay when you're dealing with two years you know you're just not going to remember and you probably don't even keep them anywhere special and so you really don't know who's in the pool um, and so having them submit a new calf alerts people to go oh so, oh oh um, or not so, so yeah I would say for this appointment only that yep. if you're willing to do that that might be helpful to the council because we're in this sort of hybrid mixed yeah. time and the new policy would have had them receiving these yeah. um, close to when the appointments are being made that was the whole point they come in close to when the appointment is right. being made and the recommendation is being made and so as a courtesy saying because this policy was adopted halfway through our determination of the sufficiency of the pool, I'm just sending them to you, um, I think would be fine. I'd be happy. I'd be chair happy that has to, to gather stuff. I, I don't want to have to add another email to remember to send to the council <laughs> with gathering yeah. of stuff. So, but yeah, I think yeah. this time that's a good solution to this I can change over either. to a new policy. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. We've got one opening, right? Yeah. We have one opening and we have eight candidates. And, I'll make uh, the motion to declare the pool sufficient. Is there a second? Second. second. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, all right, Darcy seconds. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. Um, not seeing any hands raised. I'm going to go immediately to vote. This time I'm going to start with uh, Darcy. Yes. And Mandy. Aye. And Pat. Aye. And the chair is an aye, so the vote is four to zero with one absent. Declare the FinCom pool sufficient. The chair will send out an email to all town councilors with these eight CAFs attached with a brief note explaining that going forward, these will be um, sent to you. Um, you'll get them as part of the process, um, but here, FYI, I'm sending them all to you now. Um, let me ask a question because I'm just, my brain is on 50,000 things here. Um, at what point can we not accept it? We've decided, haven't we, by policy that we can entertain new candidates up to the time, what did we decide? When, when is the point at which no new candidate can uh, be entertained in this process. At, at the time the applicant names and SOIs are added- Are posted, the yes, posting. right. So up to that oh. point, we could still, so this, the, the field is still open. Yes. I guess that's what I'm trying to say to myself and perhaps to the public. And just to make sure that it's true, the field is still open. Um, if anyone wishes to apply for this, um, they can do so. Um, they just need to try and get, get a calf in as soon as possible. Okay, all right. Could you remind us as who's leaving? Uh, it is- um, Jane. Jane uh, Scheffler. Jane Scheffler um, uh -huh. has, has, has resigned. Um, and are any of these people women? Uh, we have three members, or we had three members, now we have two. Uh, two of them are men and one is a woman. One was a woman. So oh right no, now, I mean, two. of the applicants. Uh, I believe, let me think, I think at least one is. I think, yes, either Galani or Padnani is a woman. Um, I, I, again, I, what I suggest, Darcy, is that you, I'll be sending this to everybody. Um, yeah. Just open it up and take a look. And um, I'm sorry, I just, I haven't, I should have a number in terms of the, the diversity of the field. It was more ethnically diverse than sexually diverse. That's for sure. In terms of, uh, it's mostly men. So, if there are some women out there who would like to apply, um, one of the candidates we did have previously, um, who is a woman, um, at this point in time could not did not feel that she was able to uh, make the commitment. So we did have a woman in the original pool, but she stepped out. Just wondered. Yeah, that's no, a good question. Um, and I, I think going forward, a future GOL chair, um, when we're doing the sufficiency of the pool, it should actually provide you with some, some data as to gender and age and uh, uh, so forth. Um, here, I'm just sort of winging it, I'm afraid. 
All right. Um, I would like us to look at, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment and I see if I can find it. I'd like us to look at the selection guidance. And the question is, where is it? <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I thought I had everything set up. Let's go back here. Um, all right. This, I think this is it. All right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna share this with you for a second and see if we can agree that this is adequate. And I have a question about it. Okay, so here is the selection guidance that we have used in the past. And Mandy, whose memory is far better than mine, and Pat may also be able to help us here as well because my memory is going. We had in the, um, the second paragraph, which is only one sentence, we had at one point a sentence about consulting the chair. Right. Um, if there were any special needs, blah, blah, blah. And my memory is that we took that out. Is that the memory? It's because I have two documents that are FinCom guidance. And the one that I believe is the correct one is the one we're looking at. The other one has a second sentence, which says that the chair or their designee should reach out to the chair of, of finance and inquire as to whether they need any special skills or whatever. And my memory is vaguely that we felt that should be removed, but perhaps it was the other way around. Well, does anyone remember? I do not. In our, and, what, what's in our new policy? Uh, it's, I think selection guidance is, uh, isn't that what we're looking at? Uh, well, that's a good point, Darcy. Um, so, go ahead, Mandy, please. I'll try so to find selection it. Selection guidance, I, I can put it up because I'm, I'm getting ready to do this with ZBA appointments. Thank you. Um, yep. The selection guidance says um, the council, need, the, the committee needs to, by majority vote, adopt selection guidance. Um, what we're trying, right. There is an A section, a section A that says criteria for a healthy multiple member body. And so I think we should copy that section. Those there's three items there. The council considers the following factors to be important for a multiple member body to be healthy. It lists three sentences or multiple sentences under three subheadings. Um, I think we should add that to the selection guidance. That okay. is the strong base of seasoned members, newer members and members who reflect the diversity of the town's residents. And then there's a section B to the selection guidance item in the policy. Prior to the adoption of selection guidance, the chair of the recommending committee shall solicit from the chair of the body that has vacancies any preferred knowledge and or expertise to meet the current needs of that body to be included in the draft selection guidance presented to the recommending committee. And so I think we, you know, what's on the screen, at least those four bullet points, mm -hmm. um, is what the chair of the finance committee has in the past presented as the preferred knowledge um, and all. We could resolicit that from Andy um, or go with what he's generally always came back with, which is these four bullet points. Right. Um, of what's on the screen, that whole last paragraph isn't, isn't included in the selection guidance section of our new council policy. So I would delete that. And if, um, yeah. if, if people want something about that in, yeah. we should copy the reappointment section of the new policy identically. Yeah. Because this is not what the new policy says. All right. So right. This is, yeah, go ahead. I guess I would just say um, there is no necessity for our continuing to have this because it we have our new unified policy and that kind of overrides this. Um, well, so the, right. the new, yeah, the new right. unified policy simply asks yep. um, what, you know, just basically says what Mandy Joe just said, which is that we, we simply solicit Andy to ask him what's missing, you know, what, what is missing of, on your non-voting residents skills and expertise that you might need. Um, and so, well, I guess, Darcy, first of all, we've, we've done this a number of times uh, prior to your presence on this committee and the chair has responded and what you have in front of you is exactly what the chair and this committee has agreed 
too. So I don't see any point in that. I don't see any point in going back. I mean, the committee may overrule me and that's fine, but I don't see any point in going back to, to the chair at this point and asking him, do you want to add anything to this? Um, it's already been used in the last year and a half, at least twice. Um, and so I think it's, but if the committee wants me to do that, I will. I think that what I am hearing is that this does need to be revised to, as you just said, Darcy, to bring it into agreement with the new existing policy we just adopted. So we do need to make some changes to this, but I don't see, and it sounds like we do need to add that sentence back in um, about consulting the chair. But um, we as a committee, I would suggest, have the discretion to either do that or not, um, based on the fact that we've already done it now two or three times. Um, and unless the committee as a group feels like we need for some reason to go back and ask again, we're just gonna go with this as it is. Um, but so it sounds like we need to do some wordsmithing here or we wanna hold this off for, um, we meet again in a week at least that's what the schedule says. That's something we'll decide later this, this morning. Um, but we could hold this off and I could wordsmith it and bring it back or we could wordsmith it right now. What do people think about that? Well, um, hmm. it, I guess one of the things that, uh, I don't know if I have my hand raised, or, yeah. Go ahead. We're um, not. We're not. One of the, yeah, I know. So, so I try to do it right, and it's still wrong. Um, it seems to me that ultimately we need a revised. Uh, we need to update this, right. and I don't. I, and I think waiting to next week is fine. I'm uncomfortable. I'm hearing what we're saying. Oh, this is what Andy told us last time, and so we're going with that this time, but. Ultimately, we don't know ever who's the chair of a committee is going to be. So I don't want to permanently enshrine this. Um, and I think that we're, I think it will be removed when we, when you do the revised version. Is that, you know. I'm sorry, what it, would be removed? The uh, experience or what the qualifications might include, because we're saying these are Andy's qualifications and we're sure of that. So we don't need to check with him again right now. But ultimately when we rewrite, when the policy is updated to match what we passed in the council, this right. needs to come out. That's all. I'm, uh, maybe. Well, actually Pat, I have a question about that or concern because this isn't, we consulted Andy and perhaps some of the language came from him, but in the end we adopted it as our selection guidance. It's not Andy's selection guidance. It's our selection guidance. Yeah. So I think there's a couple things. Yeah. Um, selection guidance includes part A of the new policy. So part A has to be in there. Whatever part A says now, those three fact, the following three factors to be important for a multiple member body to be healthy. So those three things need to be in this document and they're not. Selection guidance then says, input from the body's chair prior to the adoption of selection guidance, the chair shall solicit from the chair of the body that has vacancies. So it's a shall, any preferred knowledge and or expertise to meet the current needs. And so I think these, these bullet points in that first one is sort of a prior solicit, solicit, solicitation. Mm -hmm. And so can start there. George should probably go back and say, this was your prior identified vague, whatever, do you have any, you know, you know, what preferred knowledge under expertise, whatever B says, right? But I mm -hmm. think we're also forgetting one other thing, which yeah. is in the selection guidance portion, it allows the recommending committee, which is GOL, may create a standard reference list of the skills and characteristics of a successful member of that body and the knowledge and or expertise related to the work of that body. Mm -hmm. While acknowledging that each multiple member body will have its own unique selection guidance, selection guidance overall should be based upon the following considerations. And so whatever we adopt this next time could be adopted as the standard reference list of skills, especially if Andy keeps coming back and every chair we can re-pull, but we're allowed to adopt a standard and mm -hmm. some of these for this committee could be considered standard reference list of skills and characteristics. Um, right. I, I just wanted, 
take ahead, back Tracy. what I said before. Yeah. <laughs> what was yeah. um, uh, which is the, uh, just basically endorsing what Mandy Joe just said. I, I it just slipped my mind that that I was actually the one who was suggesting that we not um, you know continually reinvent the wheel by recreating selection guidance. So we should have yeah. standard. Yes. We should have and, standard selection right. guidance. Which is what, in fact, I view this as. But okay. the committee is certainly free to change it at any time. And they're free to say, oh, no, no, uh, we, we're not going to have any of this. I, I think that, but anyway, I view this as kind of our, our, our template. Um, and I understand oh. what I'm hearing is that I need to go back to Andy and see if he has anything he wants to, to weigh in on and report back to you if he does. Here, um, and then we as a committee need to look at this and vote on it. But I, 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 I don't want us recreating the wheel every time. Every time are we going to have a discussion about, well, should we actually look for people who have experience serving on public finance? I mean, right? I mean, these are pretty much core requirements or yeah. core criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so otherwise, yeah. So, so George, can I please? recommend that you add the, the section A from the new policy into this? Title this standard selection guidance for non-voting members. Delete that last paragraph about reappointments and all, because that's a different section of the new policy completely. I mean, I'll make some changes now. So you want standard? We're going to standard. Put standard there. Add the selection A. You know, this, you can't do that now. But there's right. from the from the adopted policy. There's a criteria for a healthy multiple member body. Add that section. So is it lettered as A? Add A. From, add a uh, and the numbers adopted. one two and three below it essentially add a, from one, the two, adopted three. right yeah. exactly a one um, two three from adopted policy right and then keep the next the the set with the bullet points um mix of experience and skills delete the final paragraph and then send that on to andy because the policy now says you have to so you know solicit preferred knowledge or experience and say hey andy yeah I, does this work you know like do you have any Right. He's going to roll anything his additional eyes. needed or whatever. Um, and then you can come back and next week we can we can potentially adopt it as our standard selection guidance. And then every year, that's just what gets sent to the chair of the finance to say, is this inclusive or not, before we come back and discuss the finance chairs. So this slows things down a little bit. That's not, not, by no means the end of the world. I'm not in a super rush. But um, so we would delay by at least a week the adoption of selection guidance. Um, and we have declared the pool sufficient so we can now start proceeding, which is good. But this does need some work. It needs to be brought back to you next week um, or the next time we meet. We'll discuss that in a few minutes. But um, OK, are people OK with this? Then I'm, I'm going to call it standard selection guidance. I'm going to add A1 through 3. I'm going to delete the last paragraph. And I'm going to reach out to Andy. Yeah. OK, all right, fair enough. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to put that out of here. And um, I did not print. Um, actually, bear with me. You're going to hear a horrible noise for a second. Cover your ears. Um, The next item on our agenda is um, to be deleted. Um, we dealt with 5.2. The next item is the, we have gotten a uh, letter from KP Law that I believe is in your packet related to accessory dwelling units. And um, I want to put up the Let's find it here. And bear with me for a second. Uh, yeah. So here it is. Do you need to see the letter? Do you want? I can. I, I can show you the letter first, or I can show you the amendment. Maybe we should look at the letter first, just so you see it. Um, sure. Um, so you know, I'm not making it up. Um, which. You know, what letter? Well, so here it I've is. I've got it. You can't find it. No, I've got it. It's here. So here's the letter. It is. You know, long and detailed. It was dated September 17th. 
And um, he has reviewed the proposed amendment to the current section 5.011 of the town zoning bylaw, the ADU, and a copy is attached. In my opinion, it is in good legal form. And he tells us that the voting quantum is two thirds or nine of 13. Um, and that's, so that's that. Given that letter, I'd like to just make a motion. Which yeah. is? To declare the um, proposed 5.011 accessory dwelling unit um, bylaw clear, consistent, and actionable. Second, DeAngelis. All right, we have a motion. It's been seconded. Now I'm going to put the bylaw up on the screen, and Mandy hopefully will ensure for, to me. Whoops, what did I just do? I did something bad there. <laughs> um, okay, hang on for a second. I should give you a screenshot of my screen. You'd be horrified. Um, I'm at my desktop. <laughs> it's a nightmare. And if you had the experience, by the way, of having your screen suddenly, maybe this is just my computer. So open it up and all of a sudden, all your files are, are everywhere else. They've just been scattered all over the place. It's like somebody walked into your desk, into your desk and just took all your files and threw them everywhere. That hasn't happened to me yet. All right, I, apparently it's just, someone doesn't like me out there in the universe. All right, because that was, a, anyway. All right, let's, enough of that. So um, I'm gonna put this up on the screen. As soon as I get to the street, share screen. All right. And I'll just mention I worded it the way I did because this is a repeal and replace. So everything you're going to see is the revision. Um, there isn't anything specific. It's the whole bylaw. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. So I have a question about our process, and that is yep. for for this for these bylaws that we're looking at. Um, we're just looking at clear, consistent, and actionable, not right. substance. That is correct. correct. So if, if you you may, in theory, or I may be absolutely 100% opposed to this bylaw and would never vote for it in a million years, but here on GOL, that's not relevant. It's just, and we have now determined actionability. The lawyer has stated that this is actionable. The only other task for us is clear and consistent. Is there any wording, any section where you just doesn't seem to be clear to you, doesn't make sense, or perhaps contradicts something elsewhere in the bylaw? Now, given that this has been looked at by the planning department, it's been looked at by the planning board, it's been looked at by CRC, and it's been looked at by um, our attorney, our job, I think, is pretty much been done. But nonetheless, it is the last chance for, for in this case, for, thoughtful individuals to look at this one last time and see if they notice anything amiss from the point of view of clarity or consistency. And um, we have uh, at least two members who have been looking at this for some time. So um, any concerns, problems, thoughts uh, as to clarity or consistency of this bylaw that you have in front of you? I, we could go through it section by section. That's an option. Um, my assumption is you've all had a chance to look at it, but I realize we're all very busy. And um, anyway, so do people want to go through this section by section? Do people want to um, simply, if they have concerns, simply raise them? Or do you want to move immediately to a vote? I think we can vote. I personally have looked at this and I have no problems, but um, if people haven't had a chance or whatever, but so I would agree with Pat. Yeah, I think that I probably agree. I, you know, I brought up an issue back yes. when we was in front of the council about, um, about the like possible challengeability of um, the fact that like, I would need a special permit to have a thousand square foot ADU in my yard, but Shalini wouldn't. Yep. Yep. Um, so that, that might be something you might raise at council as a concern about the substance, it sounds like, of the bylaw and its impact. Yeah, I don't know whether it's, yeah. So I'm not going to push that because, um, you know, I am mm. worried that. If my neighborhood started to be 
filled with thousand square foot dwellings. They just fill up with students anyway. So I am not going to push that. Um, so, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> what I'm hearing at the moment is that there, no one has any specific concerns about clarity or consistency. We've had actionability dealt with by the attorney. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any appetite for going through this section by section since people have had a chance to look at it now for some time. And some have looked at it a great deal over the last um, many, many months. Um, I'm prepared to move to a, a vote uh, on the motion. All right, seeing no objections, I'm going to move immediately to vote. I'm gonna start with Pat. Aye. Uh, Darcy? Yes. Mandy? Aye. And the chair is an aye. So um, we have voted four to zero with one absent to declare the uh, ADU uh, bylaw uh, uh, amendment to section 5.011 to be clear, consistent, and actionable. This is a rescind and replace. So as Mandy has pointed out, and the chair hopefully will remember, when this goes to Athena and to the council, they will get this entire document. There will be no redlining, no, um, because uh, this is an entirely new text. Okay, all right. The next item, if you will bear with me, this is um, that came to me at, uh, within the last 48 hours from KP Law was their opinion um, on parking. Is that correct? Is that that is the one? No, it was apartments. the apartments. It's the apartments, apartments. one. That, okay, I got two, and the only one that could conceivably be acted on would be apartments. And let me just first show you the letter from KP Law before we do anything. Um, does that, hang on for a second. All right, so I'm gonna open that. And I'm gonna share the screen. So is that is that in our packet? It is not. It, it, um, I came literally Tuesday a.m. like, well, actually it was like 12.30, so it was Tuesday. And it was right after council meeting. Paul sent me an email uh, with two uh, letters from KP Law. And um, in the interim between uh, Tuesday morning and right now, Wednesday morning, I have just been too busy to add stuff. So you're seeing it for the first time. And if you're uncomfortable with that, um, that's definitely, I understand that. Um, but I, it's not in the packet. That is correct. The letter well, is not in the packet. It's not, yeah, the, it's not on the agenda. It's not in the it's packet. Under the, it's, it's, under the 40, it? it's under the 48 hour rule. Oh. I just got it. We're, we are. I got it at we after see midnight. The letter. Can we yeah. see the letter? Because it is properly okay. under the 48 hour rule if it came Tuesday morning to George. It's Wednesday morning. It's been less than. 30 it's hours. been definitely less than 40 hours. Okay, but this like is a huge hours. issue. Um, right. I, I would yeah. like a chance to explain what's going on with apartments. So that's why I'd like the letter put up. And okay, then let's put as the letter chair of CRC, see, yeah. I can explain what is going on. So here is the letter that I got dated September 21, um, but I did not get it until a Tuesday uh, morning. So I don't know how that happened, but that's what happened. Um, and uh, here it is. Let, let, let me know when everyone's done reading and if I'm with done. George's permission, if I could put up a, a document related to the apartments bylaw. I think just for clarity's sake, my understanding at this point is that uh, Joel Bard was looking at two different proposals and that's why he's here. I've reviewed proposed amendment to article 12 um, related to apartments and I analyzed versions from the planning department and the community. We read it, George. I'm sorry, I'm, okay. We did read it, honey. May, may I share my screen, George? Go ahead. Go ahead. So what CRC is proposing is the only item that will be on the agenda on Monday night for a first reading related to the apartments bylaw is 
what you see on the screen, just these two changes in the zoning districts, the RVC SP to SPR and the BG SPR to SP. Those are the only two changes that are going to be brought to the council for a vote and well, for a first reading on October 4th, we on the 4th, October 4th. Yep. Not the section 12 definition, not the any other changes that have been discussed or that Joel Bard reviewed in the multiple proposals that multiple drafts or multiple revisions that he reviewed that is also included in the letter. And so under the 48 hour rule, you know, I would argue that this is a lot easier of a discussion on clarity, consistency and actionability and all to bring to the council on Monday than potentially what um, Councilor Dumont's concern may have been because there were a lot of going on and multiple proposals and which one do we look at, which one do we vote. This is the same in both, these two changes were the same in both votes from the planning board and the CRC. There is no conflict in what the planning board and CRC voted in terms of the proposed changes related to these zoning districts. And that is the only thing that is going to be brought to the council on Monday related to these proposals. I would just say that I, I object to this being on our agenda. Um, I feel like um, it's being rushed for no good reason. And, you know, I, I don't think we should even be discussing it. What we're discussing is whether this proposed zoning amendment is clear, consistent, and actionable. That's all we're discussing. I don't, I don't even know what that means. I haven't had a chance to look at it at all. This is the first we time. Just, we it. just declared a zoning amendment clear, consistent, and actionable. We had the attorney declare it actionable. And we had the language of a much more elaborate and complex document in front of us that we all had a chance to read. I agree with you, Darcy, and I agree, I believe, with Mandy, that if, in fact, we were looking at the entire bylaw with all of its changes, et cetera, this would be not something we could do. But what we have in front of us is a very specific uh, change. It's the only matter that we brought before the council on October 4th. The attorney has reviewed it and declared it actionable. And you have it in front of you to read. Um, and that's it's basically two changes. That's it. The substance you can debate and argue uh, to as much as you wish on um, Monday night, uh, October 4th. But here, it's not a matter of whether you like the bylaw or not. It's a question of our procedure. And this was given to me, as I said, within the last 48 hours. Um, and so that's why I'm bringing it to you now, because it is uh, being put on the agenda, or would like to be put on the agenda for October 4th, just this, that's it. Why? Why do we need it on the agenda on October 4th? Because we've been working on zoning bylaws for over half of a year. Um, and numerous committees, the planning board, the planning department, and the CRC have been working very, very hard on a set of zoning amendments. It's not like this was worked on last week and somebody said, hey, let's just throw this uh, up uh, for the council to look at. This has been worked on enormously. There have been numerous public meetings, okay? So this is not a surprise to anybody. Um, and so- well, a surprise of, to me. Well, I can't help that. Surprise to me, George. Okay. The public hearing that. was in July. I, I did not know hearing... this was gonna be on the agenda today. Neither uh, did I there's... until until I got it on Tuesday morning and decided to place it under the 48 hour rule. So May I make a well, motion? Please go ahead. I move to declare the amendments to the zoning district RVC from SP to SPR and BG from SPR to SP in the section 3.323 apartments clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. I move to postpone. I don't think you have that right. Now, that's a council. That's a council yeah. right. She can, if she gets a second, we can vote on a motion to postpone, but she needs okay. a second. All right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm exercising my other. That's my, a charter right only at the council, not at a subcommittee. Can you, can you show me where that 
is in the charter? It's the charter section for charter right to postpone. It applies only to the council. This is the council. No, this no, is, it a is not there. It's a committee. It is the not the town council. It is a subcommittee. Okay. So I think we need KP law opinion on that. Well, um, I'm not. The chair uh, is ruling that it's out of order. Yep. Unless you have a motion to overrule the chair, the chair's ruling stands. Darcy, I'm not sure ultimately how I'm going to be voting, honestly, on the apartment uh, changes to zoning overall. But our job here is to look at this and determine if it's clear, consistent, and actionable. And Mandy, the way Mandy proposed the uh, motion, she limited it specifically to this, which we do have legal opinion on. That's why I can support it as being clear, consistent, and actionable. What I will do Monday night in terms of how I vote for this or not is, is different and separate and substantive and doesn't belong in this meeting. Right, I guess my, I, I just am feeling completely steamrolled because this does not, there's no reason to rush this. And there's so, no reason to bring it up as an, you know, 48 hour rule. There's no reason. Darcy, this has been on the agenda for the council for October 4th and October 18th for months. October 18th, there is a MGL law about 90 days from a hearing. These are the meetings they need to be held to save your fellow councilors holding another hearing on two changes to this bylaw, these two only. You can debate it all you want there, but we're trying to comply with state law. And these are clear, consistent, and actionable, and that is all this count this committee is set to deal with. It does not deal with substance, no matter how much you would want to now that you sit on the committee to deal with substance when you are not on the committee, you argued vociferously that this committee should not talk about substance. These are clear, consistent, and actionable. There's no reason to postpone that at all. If you believe at the council, it's not an appropriate time, you argue it there, but yeah, not. I'm not. I'm not arguing substance. I'm arguing process. Yeah. It, this is, this is, was not and under agenda. You don't agenda. have, agenda. I have not heard a second for a motion to postpone. So unless you have any, unless there's a second there or you have comments on clear, consistent, and actionability, we should probably move to a vote on that. So a motion was made to um, uh, challenge the chair's decision um, and to postpone, and there's no second. So that motion is no longer in order. The uh, current motion is the motion to declare this clear, consistent, actionable. Um, it has been seconded, and I'm prepared to move to a vote. And I'm going to start with the chair, and the chair is an aye. Mandy? Aye. Darcy? Abstain. And Pat? Aye. So the vote is three in favor, uh, none opposed, uh, one abstain, abstain, and one absent. Um, uh, okay, uh, I want to put that away. And Mandy, you, um, let me see. Okay, so we right now have no share screen, is that correct? Correct. All right, and so the next item on our agenda is, uh, okay. Mixed use building has been withdrawn. We dealt with the um, apartments bylaw under the 48 hour rule. Um, the town uh, manager timeline and uh, process and timeline was dealt with at the council meeting. So that is no longer a relevant item. It's been already dealt with. I wanna talk briefly about item number eight. Um, my feeling at this stage is this is really in the chair's, um, chair's responsibility. We, at the last meeting that we held, um, made a number of decisions, a number of votes as to disposition of various bylaws. 
A number of them would involve basically referring them either to other committees or sending them back to the town manager. So at this stage, I am not planning to uh, take up any more time of this committee uh, with this uh, until I've had a chance to uh, consult with Paul and give him a sense of what we are going to send to him and, um, and, and then also produce my report, which would go to the council um, telling them that what telling them what we've accomplished. So at this stage, I'm not asking you to do any more um, homework. Yay! And, well, uh, you're free to disagree, um, um, but um, I think you also have to realize that um, this is my problem. Um, we're uh, anyway. It's in my court now, is what I'm saying, and it's my responsibility to get the report done. It's my responsibility to uh, reach out to Paul and let him know what's coming. And if I learn anything from him or from someone else that would involve this committee revisiting this, I will certainly put it on our agenda. But at this point, unless I hear otherwise from members of this committee, um, I'm not planning to put this on the agenda again. Um, uh, I'm gonna work on the report and I'm gonna reach out to Paul. And um, so that's what I'm proposing. If anyone wants to go through the uh, document and review it one more time and say, oh, wait a minute, what about this? What about that? I'd be happy to have you reach out to me, but we did a very thorough and I appreciate that very much. I thought we did a very good job the last time we met where we went through just about everything um, and, and made dispositions for all of them, um, either through instruction to the chair or by vote. So it's now my job to go back and sort through that. So that's what I'm proposing for item number eight that you're not going to see this again unless you bring it up. We have two sets of minutes, August 25 and September 8. Um, they are in the packet. I've reviewed them. Um, I don't have any problem with them or any ch proposed changes. Um, but uh, if anyone has anything, they should bring it up. Otherwise, I'd like to, to uh, make a motion to accept the minutes as presented for August 25 and September 8, 2021. Is there I'll a second. second? Now there's a motion made and seconded. Anyone have concerns, changes, problems with either set of minutes? All right, I'm going to move to vote and start this time with the chair. The chair is an aye. Uh, Darcy. Yes. And Mandy. Aye. And Pat. Aye. The vote is four to zero with one absent to accept the, uh, to approve the minutes of August 25 and September 8. And Emily, as always, thank you for your work. Um, let's see if we have any public present. Whoops. Um, where is the participants? We have one. We have one member of the public present. Uh, um, and so if <laughs> Sorry, uh, any, any member of the public wishes to speak at this point, um, I'm entertaining public comment and a hand is raised. Oh my God, I've never had to do this before. So. <laughs> do you uh, know how, George? <laughs> uh, we're going to find out. Uh, hopefully, Anna will be patient. Um, uh, so I could promote her to a panelist and have her you speak just, to us. You should be able to just click on her and say, allow to talk. Thank you. All right. He does she should be able to unmute herself. We have a person, uh, if you would unmute, and it looks like you have, you'd introduce yourself, and you have three minutes. All right. Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. I'm so honored to be the only attendee. Um, I can't believe that that's the case. This is, this is critical stuff here. Uh, so, Anna Dunlap here. I'm at 83 Bay Road in I can't, Excuse me. I can't understand her because of an echo or something. I'm sorry. If you could sorry, speak I, a little louder, if you can. I'm in my office and it's really echoey. I'll do my best. I'm sorry. Can you hear okay. me better? It's a little better, Anna. All right. Sorry, folks. Um, I haven't hung stuff up in this office, so the echo's strong. Anyway. Uh, really quickly, I, I know that you are, are pretty much done with the, um, the uh, sorry, I had it pulled up, the document around selection for multi-member bodies. Uh, and I just wanted to toss in a thought, and I understand that I'm coming in late. I apologize uh, for not being on the ball. But 
two things that I would recommend considering for this is doing some training work around bias mitigation for folks who are uh, participating in that selection process. One of the things to consider is the creation of a rubric when you do create your interview questions, thinking about making sure people are looking at the same measures of meeting those, those questions, right? And I understand that some of them are subjective, but for ones where there are clear parameters or clear things that are shared, I'd recommend using a rubric. It's best practice in terms of um, that interviewing process to mitigate bias. Uh, specifically, right, the conformity bias, where we want to have people who act like us and look like us and sound like us. The other component to think about is in the bias mitigation, you know, there's, there's trainings that can be done that are, we're not talking about major requests on time. And um, yes, this would be great if it were something everyone would do, but I think specifically for folks, you know, and, and I'm happy to talk more about this, it's something that I do work in professionally, uh, a little bit, but you know, if there were a quick half an hour module that folks could at least familiarize themselves with to understand where bias might come in in a selection process, right? Because there's a lot of ways where we, for example, uh, negate lived experience as a valid indicator of um, ability. So there's a lot of ways that bias can creep in and, and there's really small, simple steps you can do to at least start the process of mitigating that. And I'd love to see that effort towards anti-racism, towards diversity on our boards, introduced into the selection process for multi-member bodies. Or is that the right phrasing? Sorry, if you know what I mean. That kind of, no, yeah. no, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, the sound uh, is Thanks for listening to me. I just really quickly, because you haven't cut me off yet. Um, the Zoom thing is so helpful because I can tune in while I'm working and, and things like that. So regardless, I hope you uh, maintain a Zoom option where there are um, closer views of you all. I mean, I, I understand that Zoom is possible from the town room, but you can't see. Um, and I remember Mandy and Evan waving. We can see your arms waving. We can't see your faces and see you talking. Um, as we could if we were in that space. So, you know, again, also happy to, this is something I've also been doing a lot of work on in my, my grown up job, but happy to brainstorm on how to, how to do hybrid in a way that might work for folks to be able to attend in this way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, seeing the presence of no one, no other hands have raised, um, that is public comment for today. Um, item 11 was discussion of future agenda items. Um, we are planning to meet uh, next week. That is uh, on our regular schedule. And we do have now at least one item to deal with, which is the FinCom um, situation. We're going to be reviewing selection guidance. Um, and Mandy? You can finish. Well, it, it's just, I, I think people know where I'm headed. Um, other, I, well, what else is on our agenda? Surveillance. <laughs> Surveillance. What is that? Legal opinion what? came through this morning. Wait. And Wait. so Pat and I are hoping to meet before next week's GOL meeting to discuss the legal opinion. So maybe I know you were hoping to cancel the meeting, but. No, no, no I just asked him a question. Pat and I might be really appreciative if it goes forward <laughs> with that legal opinion that just came through. Yeah. So there's something you guys want really badly that, you know, okay. Well, Darcy, what do you think? Um, should we, um, anyway, that, so we have two items at the moment. And so it sounds like anything else that would be on the agenda for next time that anyone would like to have on the agenda or um, uh, for instance, we've just had a suggestion from a member of the public that perhaps could be put on the agenda for something just for discussion purposes and maybe not so much for this iteration of GOL given the time and so forth, but perhaps laying the ground for a future GOL committee um, since we will be doing interviews um, and we will be, um, so the idea of rubric, that sort of thing, um, any interest in adding that to a discussion next time? Right now we have two items, which is fine. I'm interested in adding it and, and wondering also uh, if it seemed appropriate 
uh, to actually ask Anna back so we can ask more questions and, and things like that, or if she can send us material that we can look at between now and then. Okay. I think we definitely, since we're gonna go forward with this process, um, once we adopt selection guidance, we might be able to change, turn it into a rubric, you know? And so I think we could talk about that as part of the one agenda, one of the two agenda items that was already on it, FinCom appointments, right? Or recommendations. Mm -hmm. You would um, fold that into it? it? You would consider I think we can fold that into that as long okay. as you, we make note that we're folding it into that. Yeah. Um, at least as it relates to that, um, as chair of CRC that's starting this process for ZBA associate appointments, I, I made myself a note that can be folded into that process too. Um, okay, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we there have might... a hand. We have a hand raised in the public, oh. and so uh, Darcy uh, is trying to speak. Well, Darcy, please. Yes, go ahead. I just wanted to say that there may be a couple of resolutions coming along. Not totally clear yet, but um, to okay. climate related um, one to support extended producer responsibility legislation on the state level that would bring cash into the town. Um, and um, well, okay. anyway, so there on may the, be, no, there on may the horizon, be I hear you. Okay. Um, and again, all I would ask and I is that to the degree possible, the sponsors, so I assume you might be the council sponsor, so they have a council sponsor, um, that they try to get it uh, to us, um, you know, as soon as is humanly possible, as opposed to like, you know, the night before. Um, oh, right, right. Yeah. And especially if you wanna invite people. So normally, as you know, when we have these kinds of resolutions, we invite the sponsors along, obviously with the council sponsor to be present. So good, okay. So, um, we do have a hand still raised. Uh, I'm going to consult my committee here. Um, are you uncomfortable with me? Because um, okay, for it. All right. no. I'm going to unmute and uh, allow um, our one uh, member of the public to speak again, if she wishes. Our fan club. I know, fan club. I'm going to go to Jersey. Um, so just really quickly, I am happy to send you many, many materials and also happy to discuss this further. I also can refer you to some folks who do this work professionally, like full-time professionally. Um, whatever direction you choose to go in, I'm happy to support. So just let me know. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right. All right. So um, seeing that we have no further business that I'm aware of, and we uh, will be meeting uh, one week from today. Um, and we have at least now uh, a number of items on the agenda and perhaps even a resolution. Um, I'm prepared to call this meeting to an end and to adjourn it. All right, so go Great. forth, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, thank Take you. Take care, everyone. And thank you, Emily.